flip flops and open back shoes out there. However, flip flops change your gait cycle. People take shorter steps. You don't uh, weight bear the same when you are walking with flip flops because you're not striking the heel exactly the same as you normally would. Um, the toes have to curl. Your feet have to work harder to keep that shoe on. So. Because you're not taking as long steps, the feet are not clearing the ground as much, and it increases a person's risk for falls. So if, if your balance is compromised, and likewise, with young children, I don't let my young children wear flip-flops. It's just not safe when they're running around quickly. Um, not a good idea. Um, heels. If you're going to wear heels, make sure they have a thick heel. Those skinny stilettos, not a smart idea. To have all your weight balancing on top of those, those really narrow... Um, Shanks is, is not too smart. Number five, turning safely. And this is a big one. Um, as we get older and our balance reactions change and our gait may slow down a little bit, people still turn as they normally do. You're walking along, your friend sees you up ahead and they're calling your name, they're going, hey Joe. And you quickly turn around to go see who that is or what's, who's calling your name. What happens when you turn around quickly your feet are still planted on the ground. You're moving quickly, so momentum keeps pulling you, and you're turning with your shoulders first. What can happen is your feet can cross, and you could fall down. What I tell people to do when turning around is to turn uh, from the hips, turn from the pelvis. Move your feet first, and then let the shoulders follow. Because then you're moving in one line, as opposed to swinging your upper body, and then the lower body hopefully will stay planted on the ground and not, not twist around and fall. Likewise, if you are walking and turning a corner, walk and then stop and turn your feet. Okay, don't, don't keep walking and hugging corners because that's when people start bumping into walls and they're complaining about being bruised through their arms in black and blue because they're bumping into walls. Um, on the back, number four, have your medications reviewed at least twice a year by all of your physicians. This is really important because medications can contribute not only to balance and muscle weakness, uh, but also lightheadedness and dizziness. And it's very important that a person's physicians, that all the physicians that are treating that person know what that client is taking. Because sometimes the cardiologist may prescribe something and the internist doesn't know it, and he may prescribe something different. And medications, when combined, can have, um, and then they can accelerate or decelerate the effect of other medications. So it's really important that all doctors know what you're taking and so forth. Um, maybe even reduce some of what you're taking. Um, number three, drinking water. Really, really important. Um, a lot of people come into the clinic, they will report that they get lightheaded, they get a little dizzy and so forth, and um, drinking enough water can really reduce that. As we get older, our thirst mechanisms are not as strong as what they were when we were younger. So you've all heard that by the time you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Well, add 20 or 30 years onto that, and you're even more dehydrated. So what I tell people is drink at least five eight-ounce glasses of water a day. You know, it doesn't matter necessarily if it's crystal light or water, just better that it's not a carbonated beverage, so forth. Um, that can make a big difference in reducing a person's lightheadedness and dizziness. It's also important uh, for people who are taking a lot of medications. You want to make sure that you're drinking enough water so that there's not a medication buildup in your system. Um, also, the water is important because when we wake up in the morning, what's one of the first things we do? We go to the bathroom and we eliminate water from our systems. So something else I tell people to do is within the first 10 minutes of waking up, have a bottle of water at your bedside rehydrate yourself. You don't want to start your day dehydrated. Number two, breathing. So important, especially for women who tend to be much more shallow breathers than men. Um, we're so busy doing so many different things, coordinating family, coordinating where we need to be, doctor's appointments, that we sometimes forget to breathe. And that's important for our posture. It's important for reducing dizziness. It's important for reducing lightheadedness. An exercise I tell people to do is when they get home, lay down on the bed in a comfortable position, put one hand on your chest, put another hand on your belly, and just lay there and breathe quietly. And see if one hand rises more than another. And that will tell you if you feel your chest rise a lot more, you're not breathing enough through the diaphragm. You're not 
you're not breathing through the belly enough. Likewise, you might be just be breathing through the belly and your chest may not be rising a lot. So do that exercise and then see if you can get them about equal. You want both to rise, not just one. Another exercise that's really good, uh, both for reducing dizziness and lightheadedness, as well as for normalizing blood pressure and so forth, as well as just oxygenating the whole body, is an exercise I call parallel breathing. And what you do is you breathe in through the nose for the count of four seconds, and then you exhale slowly through the nose for four seconds. And what, what that does is you get much better oxygenation throughout the whole body. Normally, we don't breathe long enough or deeply enough to really get the full benefits of the oxygen because most of the oxygen exchange happens at the base of the lungs. And so when you breathe in deeply for four seconds through the nose and then you slowly exhale, it's a good exercise for the lungs to get that oxygen and control the air and not just dump it out. So it will reduce your fatigue during the day. It will reduce your fatigue when you're walking and doing exercises so that you're not... <sighs> come the end of exercises. Or if you do find that you're panting and short of breath, try the exercise and you'll see how quickly your heart rate and blood pressure normalize. Last one, speaking of exercise, it is so important. And I think that variety is the spice of life. I think there are so many benefits and so many good forms of exercise um, that people can really benefit from doing some doing different programs. Having a pool program in conjunction with um, a weight a weight bearing weight resistance program combined with um, maybe a yoga class or another class that you may find that you like. Um, don't, do, don't do just one thing. Combine it with lots of different things um, and enjoy what you do.